There you go. So I have the ability to uh, mute and unmute everyone. So I just muted everyone just so there's no background noise and stuff. Um, if you all have a question during the presentation, then you'll, you can feel free to unmute yourself. At the bottom left, there's a little microphone icon with the, you know, you can press that and to unmute and ask a question. Also on the bottom, there's a little chat button. You can press that to, to send a chat. And if you want to raise your hand, there's a button at the bottom that says participants. If you press that, then uh, I think there should be a raise hand button, right? Uh, if, if not, then you could just uh, chat on the chat function or unmute yourself and ask a question. So it's only nine of y'all today, right? So it's going to be more intimate and, you know, uh, I can go a little bit slower and uh, you know, it doesn't have to feel so formal. All right, well, yeah, again, thank you all for choosing psychology as your session. And uh, my name is Sean Shahabuddin. I'm psychology faculty at Seattle Central College. And uh, my goal is today to present to you information about what is psychology, what makes it so interesting, and why you should take at least one class to learn more about it, all right? Uh, so what is psychology? It is the scientific study of the mind, mental processes, and behavior. And uh, pretty much what we do is we try to research and understand the mind to see how humans think, feel, act, and behave. I'm sure there's always been a moment for all of us where you ask yourself, why did this person act the way that they did, right? If you've asked yourself this question before, then you're thinking of like a psychologist because that's what we do. Only difference is we conduct the research to find answers to those questions. So, um, Let's do a little activity. All right, so I, I can talk all day about definitions and all that, but it's better if you all get into it and actually take part in, you know, some decisions. So I want you all to make some decisions and do this activity. And to do this, I need everyone to unmute your microphone. So everyone has to press unmute. And what you're going to see is a bunch of words that are in different colors. And I want everyone to say the color, not the word. Right, so this will be, and I want you to read them from left to right. After you read the first row, then I want you to read the second row like this and then onwards, right? But I want us to do it all together and I want us to do this as fast as we can, right? So synchronously, say the color, not the word. So don't say hat, car, key, say red, green, blue, say synchronous, right? Is everybody ready? Ready. I'm ready. All right, so I think Jalen said their mic isn't working. That's fine, you can still say it and we'll pretend like it's working and it shouldn't have any effect. All right, ready? So three, two, one, red, let's go. Red, green, red, blue, green, red, yellow, blue, green, blue, blue, yellow, red, black, white. Right, let's, do, let's do it again, right? Like, that's ready, ready? All right. Because people are going black. faster. <laughs> so let's, let's all go kind of, so, right, so one, two, three. Red, red, green, green blue, blue, yellow, yellow purple, 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 black, green, black, green yeah. blue, red, red black. black. Let's do it again. Let's try to go a little bit faster, all right? Ready? Three, two, one. Red, red green, 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 blue, blue yellow, yellow, purple, purple black, 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 green, blue, blue red, 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 black. black. All right. Are we getting it? We're getting the hang of it, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. If your mic isn't working, that's fine. You can still play along. All right, let's do it again. Let's do a little bit faster. Only I'm gonna change these words to make it a different set of words, all right? Same thing, same thing. Say the color, not the word, just I'm gonna change up the words, ready? So one, two, three. Green, Green red, blue. red, blue, yellow, blue, black. Let's go, all right? Let's, let's go again, let's go again, ready? One, let's from the beginning, from the beginning. One, two, three. Green, red, blue, 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 yellow, blue, 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 black, 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 red, blue, that's purple, blue, not blue, blue, green, black, black, red, yellow, green, green, okay, okay, just stop, just stop, just, just, that's enough, right? <laughs> now, was the second time harder than the first time? Were these words harder to say than these words? Yep. I don't. Why, why was it harder? Just just ignore the word. Because the same there color. was more. There was more to look at. Is that why? For me, for me it was that they were um, more challenging because 
they were um, words uh, stating colors. So, so just it got more confusing in my mind as is before. Oh, uh, I forgot about that. You're right, Vanessa. I didn't realize that. Well, yeah, instead it? of just random instead words. Of just, yeah, yeah, it's the, like another color. So if you say that color, it's not the right. Well, um, just, just, just ignore the color and say the, uh, ignore the word and say the color. Why is it so right. hard? The words where it keeps sort of creeping in my brain would want to say yeah. the word and not the color when the color. Well, can you, can you explain, it. can you explain why though? Our brains are registered to read, not like see the color. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Now let me, let me mute everyone again real fast and let me, um, Okay, now let me explain from a psychological perspective, similar to what uh, Dylan, is that right, Dylan said? Uh, there's different theories to explain why this was difficult. Uh, what you just did here is called the Stroop test, where it's been shown through studies that it's more difficult to say the color than the word uh, for several different reasons. Two theories I'll present today. One is speed of processing theory, which states what Dylan mentioned, um, the word processing is faster than color processing. People have learned to say, uh, read words faster than they can name colors, and you mix them both together, uh, the words are faster to read. There's also automaticity, automaticity, automat you, you get it, you get it, right? Automatic, automatic process in the mind. Um, because we have read words so much, it becomes more active and automatic for humans to uh, actively and automatically say the words uh, sorry, say uh, uh, the words that you see instead of the color. We see a word uh, written in a different color, but we, we, we read the word first and then process the color. So recognizing colors is not an automatic process like it is with words. We also read words and we see colors. So reading colors makes it you know, a little bit more challenging. Uh, so this is kind of what I mean, is we, we see why people make decisions and we try to explain why it, it is that people process decisions the way that they do. Let's do another one of these activities. All right, so here's another one, right? Um, imagine, this is a, from a real scenario. Imagine there's a room of 100 people, uh, 70 of who are engineers, 30 of who are lawyers. Now imagine I pick a random person from this room and here's me describing this random person I've chosen from this room of 100 people. Right? He is tw uh, twice a divorced man who spends most of his free time at a country club. He regrets following in his father's footsteps. He wishes he hadn't spent so much time in college on academics and instead spend more time socializing so he wouldn't be so quick to argue with people. Is it more likely this person is a lawyer or an engineer? Now, for someone, for those who think lawyer, unmute yourself and tell me why you think it's more likely they're a lawyer. Jackson. I thought lawyer because oh. of the sort of associations with country club and huh? arguing and um, prolonged period of time in academics, although that's true for engineering too, so. Okay, uh, good, <laughs> thank you. Wait, uh, Jackson, what about you? I see you're unmuted. Jackson, I can't tell if you're talking. Yeah. Oh, no, your voice isn't coming out. You have to maybe type it in the, in the chat. Uh, other so so some reasons why people say lawyer is because of what Vanessa said right you see these clues of divorce country club father's footsteps academics arguing right all signs indicate they might be a lawyer the answer is actually engineer but can someone tell us why I don't I didn't have a reason for why I'd be engineer but I personally chose engineer because of what they were saying about arguing. I know that our brain was automatically going to think, oh, it's probably a lawyer because of arguing because of all these. Huh? So I went with the other reason, but I don't know why I chose it. <laughs> Can anyone tell us why the answer is engineer? Well, mathematically, if you're going to pick someone out of 100, you're going to more likely pick yeah, exactly. the 70%. Y'all, probability, something y'all learned back in like freshman year, right? If there is a jar full of 70 blue, you know, gumballs and 30 red gumballs, you pick one randomly, there's a 70% chance you'll get a blue gumball because it's just more of them, right? Right, so but it could be at that 30, you never know. 
It could be, but I see the probability. <laughs> the probability of it being no, an engineer is 70% more likely. And so there's still a chance there might be a lawyer, but it's 70% more likely they're an engineer. So what oftentimes people do is they look at, um, I can't understand. What people do is, okay, they look at all of this and they look at these hints that pop up, but then they, they forget that if I'm asking about probability and randomness, if you ignore all of this, if you hide all this information, and I just asked you, there are 70 engineers, 30 lawyers, who is more likely to be picked? Mathematically, it's engineers, right? Yeah, so what, why do we pick uh, 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 lawyers? Is because our mind tells us through our experiences, what we've heard, seen from the media, from our own experiences, right? That uh, uh, lawyers have a lot of these qualities, which <laughs> we've seen, and then we think it's more likely. Now, some of you may say, well, don't these qualities, uh, don't they assess a, a, a lawyer? Isn't that more likely? If you say that, then that's very similar to stereotyping prejudice and assumptions <laughs> as well as generalizations, right? How is that any more different than saying, well, they're Muslim, aren't they more likely to be dangerous? Well, they're you know, a, a Latino, aren't they more likely to do this? The, uh, our processing of making those decisions is very similar to the lawyer engineer question as it is to racism and prejudice, right? So there's a class on the psychology of racism where we talk about why people uh, think a certain way and how to maybe uh, help them think a different way. So as you've seen, psychology is more than just counseling and mental health, it's, it's, it's so much more, right? These are just some topics that we cover in a general psychology class, right? And psychologists, people, uh, they don't just work as therapists, they work in all these different fields. There are sports psychologists, uh, counseling psychologists, psychologists in the FBI and police force, uh, in medicine, in film, uh, uh, at SeaWorld teaching animals to do tricks, working at Google, Snapchat, and Facebook to update all those apps that you use. There are psychologists working in all these fields. If you get a grad degree, here's so much more you can do with a psych degree. Uh, marketing, business, criminology, law, neuroscience, pharmacology, general medicine, history, sociology, Right, all these Would things. that help with being an anesthesiologist or not so much? That's, that's a different route. Anesthesiology, I believe you can get a two-year associates or if you want to do the first certificate. If you want to do an anesthesiology, anesthesiology degree, it's a four-year bachelor's and then anesthesiology school, which I think is two more years. If you want to go to anesthesiology school, law school, med school, business school, you can get a bachelor's in psychology and still do all of those. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so let me quickly talk about these different subfields. One is the clinical therapy subfield, right? So on one end, you have counseling, which is very applied therapy. The other hand, you have psychiatry, which is very medicine based, right? Um, therapists, more talking, psych psychiatrists, 80% medicine. And then scientists, researchers on the other end. You have counselors, uh, sorry, clinical psychologists, who are a mixture of therapy and medicine, and then counseling psychologists uh, who are also research-wise. So if you've read research, like for example, giving, you know, eating chocolate makes you less depressed, those are counseling researchers who did that, right? Um, people get psychiatry and psychology confused. They think it's the same thing. Who knows the main difference between pursuing psychiatry and pursuing psychology? No one knows the difference. Well, good. So we'll all learn something new today. Psychiatry, a lot of people don't know, it's medical school. You get your four-year bachelor's, you go to medical school for four years, then you do a residency for four years, and you focus on psychiatry, which means if you're seeing a psychiatrist, they might have gone to the same medical school as your surgeon, as your podiatrist, as your pediatrist, pediatric, the, you know, the child doctor. Uh, psychologists go to graduate school and earn a PhD or master's. So we're talking about a whole different school after undergrad. They also get their bachelor's, they do uh, a PhD, which is between four to seven years, and then they do the residency where they can do uh, therapy, All right? Psychiatrists are also, uh, well, both of them can prescribe medicine. The psychiatrists, 90% of what they do is prescribe medicine. Therapists and psychologists can prescribe medicine, but it depends on what state they're in, right? Some states have laws where therapists can't prescribe, some states they can, but psychiatrists, all of them can, all they do, and that's their main 
way to assess mental health. It's through medication. Now, if you want to study psychology, you want to be a therapist, but you don't want to go to school for 20 years, right? You don't have to. The easiest and shortest way is just get a master's. Do your four-year bachelor's, go to graduate school, get your master's in clinical or counseling psych. Then you have to be supervised for a, one, in, one or two years uh, where you work with a therapist under them and you shadow them. And then you pass a licensure exam and then you can practice as a therapist. Now, you can, depending on the program, you can do your supervision hours in grad school and also finish your licensure exam also in grad school. So it doesn't have to be like uh, seven years. It could even be five years, depending on how you do it. Now, not all masters are the same. Don't think a master's in psych is a master's in psych. To be a therapist, you have to do a master's in clinical psychology or counseling psychology. You can also do a master's in an industry related field, like in IO psychology or human factor psychology or uh, UX UR. And with each of these, you get into a different field. A master's in IO, that's the business side of psychology. You can work with Google and study uh, what makes people happy at work. If you give people free food or uh, a, a free like place to shower or bathe or ping pong tables or beanbag chairs or nap time, will that make employees happier? If you want to study that, that's IO psychology. If you want to study the engineering side of psychology and design keyboards and controllers and uh, seats and chairs that humans use that are more right, productive, that's ergonomics, which is human factor psychology, a mixture of engineering and psychology. If you want to study apps, why every time Snapchat has a new update and messes up everything, I'm used to everything being here, it changes to over here. Psychologists do that. They study what's the best way to change interface and colors and sizes and fonts to make it easier for people to use, right? Um, in all these fields psychologists study, it's just what do you want to do with it and where do you want to go? If you want to teach, you can teach uh, at a university or at a community college with just a master's in general psychology. If you want to teach uh, psychology at the high school level or, or younger, all you need is a bachelor's of psychology and then six months of a teaching certificate, okay? Um, now, people also ask, what can you do with just a bachelor's? I don't want to do a master's. I don't want to do a PhD. I want to get just a bachelor's and work with that. Is that possible? And people often say, like, you know, you may have heard, uh, you can't get a job with a bachelor's degree in psychology, right? If you heard this, what they really mean is it's difficult to get a job in the psychology field with a bachelor's in psychology, which means where you can work are any of these fields. Right. What people don't know is oftentimes in today's day and age, there are specialized degrees and there are generalized degrees. Specialized degrees is you go to school, you study a skill, and then you use that skill at the workforce. So you go to school, you study nursing, you study engineering, computer science, coding, right, architecture. You learn skills, accounting, you learn skills of how to manage like numbers and stuff. And then you work and you use what you learned, right? For specialized fields, for generalized fields like psychology, history, math, biology, chemistry, uh, political science, all of these fields, you don't really work. You don't use what you learn from what you study. You study something, you get a bachelor's, and then you work in a field that accepts bachelor's degrees. All of these jobs you see here, if you go on monster.com, or indeed.com or you know these websites for jobs and you and you type in like real estate agent it'll say a bachelor's degree in psychology english math sociology or or biology right meaning it doesn't matter what you get a degree in just have a bachelor's degree from any university and you meet the qualifications to work here right more than that what people need is um more than the degree or the school is uh, do you have any prior work experience? Have you worked at part-time jobs? Have you uh, held leadership positions at like organizations? The president of the Muslim Student Association, right? The president of the Nigerian Student Association. Those positions matter more for jobs than a degree, than a GPA. You still need a degree in GPA to get an interview, but if you have like work experience or experience, you know, uh, uh, running something, that works better.
So if you, if you know a certain skill that you want to do, you know you want to learn how to do accounting to be an accountant, go do accounting, right? If you're unsure, if you're not sure, then you can do psychology and you can get a decent uh, a job with a four-year bachelor's of psychology. It all comes down to how you market and sell yourself, right? It's not so much about the degree, but how much can you sell yourself? Um, now, of course, you can't work as a nurse or uh, as, you know, as a nurse with a psych degree, you need a nursing degree. You can't work as an engineer with a psych degree, you need an engineering degree. Uh, but if, if you're not focused on a specific technical field, you can kind of do anything broad with a psych degree. Right. Um, okay, so here's some skills that psych majors learn. Why, if you take psychology, the skills you learn compared to an English major or sociology major or you know some other uh, major with a broad degree. Um, here are some classes offered at our co uh, campuses. Um, usually a lot of them are offered everywhere, but in the yellow, they're only offered at, the, at those schools. So Psych of African Americans and Psych of Racism is only offered at Seattle Central. Uh, statistics is only offered at North Seattle. Psych of Addiction is only offered at South Seattle. But uh, Psych of Gender, Abnormal Psych, Psych 100, like Intro to Psych, Sexuality, Cognitive, Research Methods, Personality, Lifespan, these are offered at all of our campuses. Right. Um, a lot of students who take Psych classes at our Seattle colleges usually have the intention of transferring to University of Washington, right, UW. Um, here's what you need to transfer as a Psych major to UW. You just need to take Psych 100, which is Intro to Psych, Physiological Psychology, which is learning about the biology of psychology, the brain, the nervous system, the, the uh, neurotransmitters, right, and research methods. Um, if you take these three psych classes with the 2.0, you have the minimum required to enter UW as a psych major. Now, you saw all these other classes I showed you, right? So some students think, well, if I take a lot more psych classes, I'm more likely to get into UW, right? Not really. Because if you take any other psych class aside from these three, they'll transfer in as an elective. So it may not make you like that more likely to get in as a psych major, but when you do transfer in, it will count towards an elective. So those extra classes won't go to waste. And aside from that, you need your general education requirement, your uh, two sciences, you know, your math, your English, your anthro, bio, and these other classes, which I'm sure, uh, I'm sure someone else has told you about this, or the advisors will tell you more about the general education requirement. Um, and that is really my presentation. I do want to have some time for questions and answers, but let me just show you all one more thing is if you would like to email me um, after the session, if you want to email me directly and ask questions about uh, classes at Central or uh, anything else that I mentioned regarding psychology, I want you all to just Google Seattle Central College Psychology. Seattle Central College Psychology, the very first link you scroll down and you'll see all of the beautiful psych faculty on our campus and just click on email and you click this and you can send me an email and I'll answer you. Just tell me, hey, Mr. S, this is so-and-so from the Discover Psychology, uh, Discover Seattle Colleges event. I have a question about this and I'll make time to do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom chat to answer any questions you have. But we have five minutes left. Does anyone have any questions for me now? I do. Yes. Um, yeah, Vanessa. You, so Vanessa, you go ahead and go first, and then Una can go second. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I'm transferring units from another state, um, but I have all the GE. Uh, is there a difference in the GE um, yeah. classes from state to state? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's a good question. So if you look at the university, uh, let's say if you want to go to UW for your bachelor's to transfer. You go on their website and look at their general education requirements. Okay. See their classes. The numbers might be different. So English 101 at UW might be English 1301 at the school you took. So you have to maybe pull up a degree plan from your school, degree plan from that school, uh, contact the UW admissions person and ask them, hey, can you tell me 
uh, if this transfers and what this transfers as. People may have taken like, uh, like algebra or pre-algebra in Texas, and then they'll be surprised to see it doesn't count as algebra at UW. And they're like, it's the same class. I learned the same thing. And if you talk to the uh, advisors, they'll say, well, you took pre-algebra 1301, which transfers as algebra 100, not algebra 102. And this degree plan requires algebra 102 and all this. So uh, go on the website and see UW's uh, gen ed requirements, your original school's gen ed requirements, contact UW admissions, talk to them, and also talk about if, you call our school too, to see if we accept those classes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Sure, sure. Uh, Una, you go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I didn't have a question, but thank you so much for everything that, you know, you said today. I really, really appreciated it. And um, yeah. I'm excited to go to, you know, find a college. And I think yeah. the hard thing, too, is I'm not really sure when I, when I, what I want to do. Like, I was thinking yeah. about, you know, psychology or um anesthesiologist or you know something else so it's just yeah. like i'm putting my options out there but i appreciate today yeah no of course uh, um thank you for coming and thank you for asking questions uh, i still have a few more minutes but before i ask more questions let me tell this to una as well as everyone else that there is a website called onet o-n-e-t and it stands for the occupational something something uh network <laughs> But it's this website where if you type in in the search bar, like uh, clinical psychologist, if I press enter, uh, if I, so there's different kinds of psychologists, a lot of what I mentioned, right? Right. You click on clinical psychologist and it tells you like the, the pay, the average pay, the skills required, how much school you need, uh, abilities, uh, where they work, um, all this stuff, right? And you can type in any job and it'll tell you like, information about that job. Um, so details and other stuff. So this is a good website to find out more about jobs. And you see though, the bad thing is it kind of puts a lot of this stuff together. It puts psychotherapist, child psychologist, uh, clinical psychologist, and applied behavior psychologist all together. So each one of them, you know, requires some different uh, education, you know, things but it kind of lumps them all together. But this is a good site if you're unsure of what major you want to do, uh, go and type in different jobs and check them out. And also remember, right, if you, uh, it's common for college students to not know what they want to do. Some students, like they say, let me take a bunch of different classes until I figure out. That might not be the best option because then when you try to transfer, a lot of those classes may not count. So it's better to speak with an academic advisor like very, very early tell them some things you're interested in and then have a few different degree plans. So maybe say uh, psychology, engineering, business, and math. I'm interested in one of these. Have all those degree plans. And then if you see like you need English 101, that counts for all those majors, take that class. If you see that uh, al algebra counts for all of them, take algebra over something else because then at least it'll count for all those majors, right? Um, yeah, and then also, of course, do your own research. Uh, Google like different careers to learn about them, ask people. Uh, it, it really, you do have to do your own work to find out what you wanna do. Uh, people can only tell you so much and the times are always changing. Your parents will say, oh, major in this, they make a lot. Well, maybe in four years, they may not, right? So just rely on people who are currently in the field, like younger people uh, and do your own research. We do have only 30 seconds before we go back. So I don't think I have room or space for any more questions, but feel free to email me and I can set up a one-on-one -on -one chat or I can just email you back with some links that you might find helpful. Thank you, but, that was really great, very informative. Yes, yeah, yeah, and I really do hope Thank you all have a chance, please, you know, take at least one psychology class and see what it's all about, you know? Uh, you can take me if you want, cause you know, I try to make it cool. Hey, it looks like we're back. Welcome back. I hope your last session was very um, thought provoking. I know you'll have questions and you'll have a chance to follow up when we have a survey sent to you as well as we have a survey for you to fill out at the end of your second 
opportunity in your next session today. So right now, we have three new sessions, Spanish, Communications, and Political Science, as well as a repeat of our Associate of Arts degree pathway. Right now, I can ask our new session instructors if you'd like to introduce yourself and give a highlight of your workshop coming up. Okay, I'm David Quintero. Uh, bienvenidos, welcome. And I'd love to talk about our program, Spanish program in Seattle Central College. Uh, we have a program that gets you to be uh, fully and formally uh, functional in Spanish as a second language. Awesome, David. Thank you so very, very much. Um, Larry, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Larry Cushion. I teach political science at South Seattle College. Uh, during my presentation, uh, I'll let you know a little bit about what it is you can expect in the classroom, as well as some of the new class offerings uh, that we're starting to roll out, including uh, the newest class being offered this quarter, uh, Cannabis and Social Justice. Uh, so if you're interested to learn some more, uh, come on over to the session. Thank you much. And um, I think Denise, you're here um, to talk about communication studies. Yes, hello everyone. Um, so I will be talking, my name is Denise Grolmus. I'm full-time faculty in communication studies at South. And I'll be talking about what communication studies is. So if you feel like watching a little bit of television with me in a moment and looking at some memes, um, you can do that. Boy, such efficient presentations and intros. Okay, thank you. Um, any other highlights for our Associate of Arts degree team? No? Well, we will not have memes, but we will be going through the degree <laughs> worksheets. Very exciting, six sections. So if you wanna learn more about that, we'll see you there. Awesome, <laughs> thank you, Maya. <laughs> okay, I guess at this point, um, do anybody, do any of our guests have any questions? You can put them in chat. And if not, I think the next breakout sessions are Hey everyone, welcome. We'll just wait for people to sort of roll in before we get started. Um, but while we wait, feel free to um, drop your name and um, where you're from in the chat. So high school, but city, town, wherever. Um, people are coming to South Seattle from all over, especially in pandemic land. Um, I have people that are in Mexico, in Kenya, um, in California, in Boston. So it's always fun to see where people are coming from. Oh, cool. All right. So uh, we have some psych faculty who wants to watch uh, television and look at memes. Always good. Hey, Sean. <laughs> How about the rest of you, Hannah, Leah, anybody? Nadia, welcome. All right, proud Seattleite here. And then Christy, I have a former student in here. That's awesome. Hey, Christy. Ah, uh, awesome. Welcome back, Sarisa. Maryland, see, hello. Hey. Oh, so cool. I wish Christy could give you a presentation. She can tell you what communications is about. She's taken uh, two of my classes now, so. Very cool. All right, well, it's 4.04. I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, first, I'm gonna record this meeting so they can make sure that I do this right. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen.